Hey there, thanks for stopping by the channel. The question I want to answer today is, do I need a dedicated circuit for a bedroom? Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and click the bell to receive notifications about new electrical content that I post every week. And the answer is technically, no you do not. You could theoretically pull power from another circuit as long as that circuit had additional capacity available. Now let me explain a little bit more uh, how you can kind of calculate that. The general rule of thumb for when you're calculating how much power you need for a given space for general purpose lighting and receptacles, so not for dedicated appliances like a washing machine or a dryer or any sort of appliance that is always plugged in, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about just general purpose lighting and receptacles. That is calculated out based on square footage. So this little bedroom that we're in right now is about 14 by 14, so we're gonna multiply that and come out with 196 square feet, or let's just say 200 square feet. Now with that information, we multiply the square footage by three VA, or volt amps, or basically watts. So we'll take our 200 times three, which gives us 600 watts. Now if we look at our typical circuit, a lot it's either gonna be a 15 or a 20 amp circuit. If we assume that it's going to be a 20 amp circuit, we take 20 times the voltage of the circuit, which is 120 volts. So 20 times 120 gives us 2,400 watts. Now if we were to only want to load that to 80% of its rated capacity, we would multiply that by 0.8, which this is probably more conservative than we need to be, but in theory then we only have 1,920 watts uh, of power that is available for just serving general purpose lighting and receptacles. So with that information, we can actually extrapolate what our square footage would be from one 20 amp circuit that we could cover. So let's take our 1,920 watts and we're going to uh, divide that by three and you can see that we can cover about 640 square feet with one 20 amp circuit. So we can see that with our roughly 200 square foot bedroom, we're not gonna come anywhere close to using up the total available square footage for one 20 amp circuit of 640 square feet. So we could actually do two more bedrooms in addition to this one on one 20 amp circuit. Now, before you go and absolutely max out your circuit and put as many square feet on one as you can. I have one suggestion for you. If you are working on wiring just some general purpose area, bedrooms, living space, that kind of a thing, uh, group them together in such a way that you can separate them later if you need to. So let's say that you put a little addition on and you have a living room space right here. So this is the living room. And then we have three bedrooms coming off of that. So this is technically all general general purpose living space. If this all totaled less than 640 square feet, we could put all that on one 20 amp breaker. But there are a couple of suggestions that I would uh, possibly implement. Do all of your wiring in each room and then bring a, a separate wire back to wherever your main panel is for each room, okay? so. That first room had a lot of receptacles in it. So we have all of our wires and then we have basically four home runs coming back from there. And then what you can do is bring those all into a junction box and then just bring, let's call this the junction box here. Bring those all into the junction box and then bring that into your main panel. So my personal preference with how to wire general purpose lighting and receptacles is to kind of use that rule of thumb for your, your VA or your wattage calculation and you can kind of figure out exactly or roughly how much area you can cover. If you have two bedrooms on a circuit, that seems like about the right amount. Or if you have a living room and a bedroom on a circuit, that seems like a common sense way to break things up. You don't want to try to max out every single circuit. Um, if you just put a living room and a bedroom on a circuit, you would still have capacity for a third room. So if you're ever to add another room on, you could probably just tap off of that existing, that existing circuit. Now the other thing that I would take into consideration is separate your lights from your receptacles. Do 20 amp circuits for your, for your receptacles and split them up like we just talked about. Do a couple of rooms per circuit. 
And then for your lighting, do that with on 15 amp breakers and 14 gauge wires. It makes it easier to do the wiring itself. And then it's very convenient for you if you have to work on your receptacles in the room, you can go ahead and just turn that off and you're not gonna lose the lights. It also makes it so that if you trip a breaker in one room, you still will have some power in the room, whether it be the outlets, which you might have a, a lamp plugged into, or the lights themselves. So if you have something plugged in and something shorts out and it trips the breaker for your receptacles, you'll still have lights in the room. So for our theoretical rough-in project, we would end up with two 20 amp breakers, each of which would serve two rooms worth of general purpose receptacles. And then we would have two 15 amp breakers, which would be serving the lighting in those same rooms. So we would have a total of four circuits for our addition that we are in theory wearing. So I drew out this information to explain this to you just a little bit better. So we're just gonna start by looking at the number of amps that we are working with. Obviously if we did four circuits, we'd have a tremendous, we'd actually have 70 amps worth of power from those four breakers, two 15 amp and two 20 amp. But we're gonna assume, let's just try to do this project with a 20 amp breaker for the receptacles and a 15 amp breaker for the lights. So up here, we have 15 plus 20 amps equals 35 amps times 120 volts equals 4,200 watts. We take those 4,200 watts divided by three, which gives us 1,400 square feet of area that we could technically cover. Now, if we multiply that by 0.8, that gives us our 80% reduction. Like I said, that is not necessary, but we're just being hyper conservative here in making sure that we have plenty of power for the area that we're covering. So if we go with that, then we have 1,120 square feet that we can cover. Now we're gonna assume that we're putting on a 30 foot by 30 foot addition with those rooms that we talked about, the living room, two bedrooms, and an office. So that comes out to be only 900 square feet. So you can see with just those two breakers, a 20 amp and a 15 amp, we have plenty of power for covering this area because our lighting and our receptacle circuits are included in that 3VA uh, figure that we've been talking about, or that three watts per square foot. So you can see here on my diagram, I have my black markings is for my receptacles and then my yellow is for my lighting. Now I've combined them so you can see here, the bedroom and living room are combined together. So I just ran my wires out and then connected them up here. They would actually probably in reality connect in this wall. So this would all be one area that would be tied together coming back on one wire. And then for the lighting, the same thing, the lighting would tie together out here and then come back on one wire. And then we have the second area of the house where we have the same thing going on. So two bedrooms are combining onto one cable coming back. Now above the panel, we are combining those wires. So we have our 20 amp circuits from our receptacles coming back from our addition. And then we're running those into a little junction box right above the panel. And then we're just running one 12 gauge wire to our 20 amp breaker inside of our panel. And then we're doing the same thing with the lights. So those are gonna be combined up here in this junction box and then run into that 15 amp breaker. Now that allows us to separate those in the future. So we could just take this wire out of the junction box and run a second 12 gauge wire down into here and add a second 20 amp breaker. And then we'd have a 20 amps for the office and bedroom and 20 amps for the living room and bedroom. So you have really good flexibility for the future if you wanna separate them out. I just wanted to point out that you could get by with just a 20 amp and a 15 amp breaker for that particular area. Cause if you're tight on panel space, then you don't wanna put in a whole bunch of extra uh, breakers if you don't need to. And this way, you always have the option of adding more breakers later and separating out those rooms. If you really wanted to go overkill, you could run a separate cable back from each room. So you'd have a lighting cable and a receptacle cable coming back from each room that you do. Now, I don't think that that's quite necessary. I feel like combining two rooms is probably good enough. Hopefully that clarification is helpful. Now we're gonna put this video into that timeline. If you found this video to be helpful, would you please do me a favor? Hit that subscribe button right down here and click the bell to be notified about future videos. I do my best to put out a new electrical video every single week, so I'd love to have you guys as part of the community. If you wanna keep learning about electrical, I have a couple of videos or playlists right here, so click on one of those and I'll see you over there in just a few seconds. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll talk to you 
in the next one. Right over there. <laughs>